My number one question that I get in this channel is I feel great, even high vibe, but my manifestation hasn't arrived yet. Where is it? What am I doing wrong? And the answer, straight to the point, is that you felt differently but did not believe things had changed. And that is the only reason why your manifestation hasn't arrived yet. Case in point, did your love for your ex stop you from breaking up? No. Did you enjoying your work environment stop you from being let go? No. But did your belief that your ex was going to leave you manifest because you felt unworthy or that you had made an unforgivable mistake? Yes, it did. Did your belief that your ex was going to move on or meet someone else manifest? Yes. Did your belief that you were unworthy of a second chance, a better position at work, a new job opportunity, better pay, etc. manifest? Yes. So let me explain feeling and its role in manifestation just to provide more clarity for you. Do feelings play an integral part in the manifestation mechanism as a whole? Absolutely. So do thought patterns, moods, assumptions, actions and behaviours. But they are not individual methods of conscious manifestation when going after a specific outcome unless you are true in the knowing that Christ is in you, that you are God experiencing his own creation in human form. And considering you're watching this video, that answer is no. Let's be honest, right? If we don't know the problem, we can't apply the solution. Now, individually, these thoughts, feelings, moods, assumptions, actions, and behaviors all set your point of attraction. In other words, they let you know what you are aligning with. But in order to consciously manifest something specific, all of them must be in harmony with one another to be in what we call vibrational alignment with your specific manifestation. And to be in vibrational alignment with an outcome, you want across any subject matter you can think of, from a bag, to promotion, to marriage, to money, to a vacation, you must believe that you already have it now, undoubtedly, because a belief drops all expectation of that manifestation arriving future tense here in the 3D, which automatically puts you in a state of allowing. Now, a belief is stored in the form of what we call a neural pathway. This is how your brain aligns particular thought patterns with a feeling or feelings, moods, assumptions, actions, and behaviors, and stores it long-term on what you and I would typically call your subconscious mind, which means no matter what you independently think or assume consciously or feel in general, you will always be in alignment with whatever outcome that belief holds because it will automatically lead you to that result unconsciously and override willpower every time. So think of beliefs as a road navigator, right? Like a tom-tom, -tom, as we would call it here in the UK. You type in your destination and no matter if you consciously decide to take a right or a left turn and go off route, it will always reroute you to that destination. This is exactly what your beliefs do. An example of this is people who date the same person with different faces, right? Same relationship type, same issues, same ending despite trying someone different or taking a different approach. Now, beliefs are so significant because you don't want what you believe you already have or want to be who you already are, right? If you believed you had a specific car, you wouldn't be out there looking into the driveway to check if the car was there and therefore having zero expectation that your manifestation is coming soon or arriving soon is not mandatory to manifestation because you would not be waiting for what you already are or what you already have. Very important to understand. This means that any thoughts, assumptions, moods, actions and behaviours that are unsupported by a belief do not manifest. And thank God, because if they did, the world as we know it would be in a much worse off state. One tantrum as a teenager and people will be falling like flies. Now, you may be thinking, well, what you're telling me goes against every other spiritual teacher out there, especially Abraham Hicks. Mm, not actually if you watch your entire body of work. It's the random short clips or excerpts which have been taken way out of context that has created this confusion. At the core, 
Abraham, Esther Hicks, is teaching her followers the power of self-mastery so as to create and live a more fulfilling, joyful human life experience. She's bringing you to the awareness that you have the choice over your point of attraction by mastering your focus, because when you master your focus, you master your mental health. And as a result, this puts you in control of what you think, which dictates how you feel, which in turn alters your actions and behaviours. All in all, making you more consciously aware that what you watch, the information you consume, will impact your brain. And when we do this through repetition, it will form the belief that you can control your mind and thus dictate the quality of your human life experience. But the fundamentals of her teachings are based upon the importance of believing who you are first, which across the board seems to be overlooked. And that is that you are an extension of source energy, the energy which created worlds. And even Neville Goddard's work is based on the understanding that you believe in the one he sent, that Christ is in you, and that you are God experiencing his own creation in human form first. And let's look at the feeling is the secret. Feeling is not the secret. But what you can do with feeling is the secret. You see, when we repeatedly give ourselves the feeling of our desire, because the root of all desires are feelings, we are creating an experience for the brain and the body. As a result, the brain will transform this into a belief. For example, have you ever had a dream where you woke up and felt absolutely livid at your partner or friend or parent for what they did or said in your dream? Now, you and I know it was just a dream, right? But you experienced it and believed it happened despite what your senses tell you and you almost need an apology to let it go. This is the experience you're striving to create within yourself. That is the power of your imagination and that is the power of transforming imagination into an experience which transforms that into a belief. It changes your state of being. That knowing that it happened, you are looking to create because that belief that you have it now or or that you have experienced a specific situation, like a job promotion or a conversation, automatically creates the assumption that you have it now. You don't have to consciously assume, consciously think, consciously feel. The belief aligns all of those things into a neural pathway so that you can do it unconsciously. This is why you can feel differently and think differently all you like. But until you believe things have changed, the 3D will not change. And if you do not believe you have something or are with someone within you, why should the 3D reflect that change? In other words, what you call the 3D is only a mirror, an illusion, reflecting back to you and continuously echoing what beliefs you hold and who you are conscious of being. That's it. There is no out there because out there is not reality. You are. The 3D is not another version of reality. It is only a three-dimensional reflection, a representation of your inner world, your inner state of being, which I shall detail in another video. Now, there was no better example of this to reaffirm the point for those concerned about their thoughts and feelings other than what my client experienced this past week and I did get his permission to share. So let me take you through what happened and how he was able to manifest correctly even though he had negative thoughts, feelings and assumptions, actions and behaviours. He was very upset that at his local park, the swans he fed were missing. He was just stressed over this and like most of us would do before learning the manifestation mechanism, he tried making changes in the 3D. He looked for them, he reached out to those in charge and reported the issue, tried to fix the problem because in the UK swans are protected under royal authority so if any go missing it is a potential crime and it needs to be investigated. We love the swans, okay? He wasn't really getting anywhere and on top of that he received really bad news from the rangers that potentially one of them had died which created way more fear, more separation, upset, distress and made him assume the worst. So he decided to go within and imagine seeing the swans back in the pond. He did it about three or four times and each time he interacted with them as if he would normally do and just enjoyed being with them within his imagination. 
That was all, for the sheer joy of it, not expecting to see them ever again. The rest of the time, he was worried, upset, and almost in a state of grief and understandably. In the following days when he visited the park, two swans approached him out of nowhere, his words. And they were the same exact swans, and he knew this because those swans were so used to him being there that they came immediately to see him to be fed. He was in absolute shock, and I mean absolute shock total surprise and immediately thank God. He thought this was an absolute miracle. Now you tell me based on this information, why was he able to manifest the swans back despite thinking, and thinking being the operative word, that he would never see them again, and feeling so upset and negative about the situation over the potential passing of one of them? And the answer is, he unconsciously operated as if he was the one true reality, so that when he imagined, it was not for what he imagined to show up in the 3D like many of you do, but to interact with them and experience being with them within, because that was enough to have that reunion, which dropped all expectation and allowed the 3D to reflect that inner change. And because he went within, to just enjoy seeing them again and interacting with them, which used all his senses, there was zero expectation of the 3D to be any different, which meant he formed the belief that they were there, which changed his reality within, thus allowing the 3D to mirror that change and unfold in an exciting, joyful way, which made him think that this was a miracle. But really, this is the manifestation mechanism of how we create anything. So the only reason why you have not manifested what you want yet is because you have felt differently but did not believe things had changed. Because when we believe something to be true, this puts us in vibrational alignment with it automatically and it runs subconsciously so that no matter what any independent thoughts, assumptions, feelings we have, it did not stop the end from manifesting. It did not stop us from reaching our destination because as fear-driven as all of that was, he believed he had interacted and experienced the swans in the pond and beliefs trump everything. Thank you for all your subscribes, likes, shares, comments. I love speaking with you and for joining the private Facebook group, The Journey of I Am, which I will link below. With love and God bless you always, here is what YouTube suggests you watch next.